Hi guys, I want to talk a little bit about competition in the blocking space and also backlinks and whether you should start doing that now or not to combat the growing competition. And first I'll say there's definitely more competition now when creating these content sites that I talk about, like answering people's questions and such. So I think it's definitely because of just rushing a lot of people from affiliate sites into content sites because they see commissions going down with affiliate, like with Amazon, for example, and also the new review updates with Google and stuff makes it a little harder to be in the pure affiliate space. And also because more and more people see how lucrative it is to build these content sites. First of all, it's pretty easy. You just answer people's basic questions and also the rates, the ad rates, what you can earn with ads on your site is just phenomenal these days. It's just really, really awesome. You just keep going up and up. So that means that we have a lot of new people entering the blogging space. So of course it means more competition. I see this play out in a few areas. For example, when finding writers, it's pretty hard these days to find cheap, uh, decent writers. It used to be pretty easy. I've used, I've worked with writers from all over the world and it just takes longer time now. I have to sift through more applications. And uh, I just did two rounds of hiring for new writers and I saw a lot of people that didn't really give, even get back to me. You know, you send them this test article because their first writing sample they sent me was all right. And then I send them a test article and I don't hear back from them for weeks. So I'm pretty sure this is because they just send out several applications or they took on several test jobs and they probably went with somebody else. So I don't pay super high um, for my writers, typically around two to four, uh, two to three cents per word. If it's a very easy topic to write on, it's a niche that doesn't require any professional background or an engineer uh, exam or something like that. And for some of the more advanced stuff, for example, I've used, I work with a couple of building engineers and people with extensive uh, training or experience in specific fields. And sometimes I'll pay four or even five cents per word. So, so I'm, I'm in the price range and that's definitely in the lower end when you look at um, the whole blogosphere. So that also means that they can probably find better job offers and I sort of have to find writers that are not already working on a lot of other stuff. So that's one area where I see this play out. So it's definitely harder to find good writers. You need more patience. You need to read way more applications and such. And then of course, we also see the higher competition in the blogging world when we're looking for topics to write on. There are just many more people looking for these underserved topics these days. So you need to get a little better and dig a little deeper to find the good underserved topics. Maybe you need to find another product or another angle or another little word to put uh, in Google to um, trigger all these autocomplete or people also ask results to find something where you can actually compete with a new site. So it doesn't mean that it's not possible anymore. It's definitely very, very possible, especially if you know how to do topic research well. But I like to see the topic research part more and more of a skill you really need to hone and really, where you really need to get creative. It's not so much just a specific tool so that you need to know how to do it. It's kind of like I can, I can give you a pen and tell you how to write, but you need to get good at it. Or maybe drawing is a better example because I think there's an art to this. You just need to really get good at it and see when just a rabbit hole you can dive into with tons of underserved topics. So again, we see more and more topics being taken by these huge companies that just have like hundreds of writers and they enter this space as well. So I still see many years out in the future where it'll definitely be easy to start a new site from scratch. And as always, the best time to start a blog is right now and not next year, it's right now. Also, like I said, the ad rates, the amount of money you can make right now just from throwing up content on a site that drives traffic, it's just phenomenal. I mean, with AdFribe and Mediavine and also Zoic, it's just, it's just awesome.
you don't have to do anything else and just put ads on the side and that's just fantastic. It's never been easier to monetize a blog than these days. That's also why it's a great time to start a blog, even though we see some big companies and a lot of players really scaling up to huge content teams with hundreds of writers. I know several people who write like five, 10, even 20,000 articles per year because it's so easy to scale at this level. You don't need a whole bunch of expert writers on your team. You can really just have anybody who, with basic research skills build out articles for you. So if you're writing yourself, it's the same thing. You just need to get better at writing and you also need to find better writing if you are working with writers. I don't think it's going to work two, three years from now to just have anybody with maybe poor English writing skills, just write out a thousand words and smack it on the side and get traffic to it. I'm sometimes a little surprised when I see what people put up on their sites because I think the quality is pretty low in general in web content when I just look at what ranks. So I think there's a lot of opportunity here, especially if you want to write yourself or if you want to take good time to find good writers to work with. I think it's fairly easy to rise above the competition um, and, but I'm not sure Google has like the computing power or the algorithms yet to really check when an article is good. And who knows if they ever will. But I think, or at least that's how I approach this now, I really try to find really good writers and I try to crank out my best content when I'm writing, just to make sure that I will still rank for a couple of years to come or many years to come. So let's talk a bit about backlinks, because if you have a strong site or if there's just too much competition, maybe you think you need more links to rank and you'll always rank better with a site with a lot of links. But what I think is going on is that uh, some of my bigger sites and some of the people I know in this space, some people in my circles who write a lot of content with big sites, I, we all lose traffic to uh, smaller sites. That's what I think is happening because all of us with like many hundred thousands of page views per month on our sites, big meaty content sites. I think most of us are losing a bit of traffic or we are hitting a long plateau, even though we put a lot of new content on the site. I think this is just because we see so many new sites that are targeting these beginners questions. So let's say I was ranking for how to choose the best chair or whatever. And maybe this other guy now wrote 10 articles about how to buy this chair, how to buy this chair, how to buy this chair. Is this chair better than this one? So since there's just a lot more uh, articles about very small topics and smaller questions, the articles that I have on my site that used to rank for a lot of stuff, a lot of related stuff, now there's just a better article for this part of the article. And now there's just another article specifically about this thing that I just had a paragraph about. So they will steal some traffic away from my bigger articles. So that's what I think is happening. So I don't think you necessarily grow a lot faster just because you have a lot of links, but of course you will be able to outrank competitors. Let's say all else being equal. If you both have like a pretty similar length article, it's the same stuff you go into and such then you'll most probably rank over this other guy if you have more links to your site. But I just still don't really think it's worth spending your time uh, buying links or that's your money, of course, or your time writing content just to get links to your site. I still 100% prioritize my money and my time crafting content for my own site and not building articles for other people's sites for guest posts or whatever to link to my site. And I think if you want to spend like $200 on links to your site, I think you should just use that money to buy more articles for your own site. That's definitely what I do. And I also get some really wild links to my new site still. Also because I really target hard on these underserved topics, meaning that if somebody else is writing a bigger article on something that I touch on, they will have to link to me as a source. That's something that I've mentioned before. I just think targeting these underserved topics is the best strategy to get links to your site and also, of course, to rank early on. But if you want to do link building, and I've done this a lot in the past, I've built many, many links and I've helped big companies get links to their sites in my 10 years of working as an SEO consultant. The way I would go about it is to 100% go after sites that are not easy to get into. Go for the impossible links, because if you just buy your way into a few sites here and there that accept guest posts or whatnot, 
you'll just have links from the same sites that everybody else has. So whenever I did link building or you can say PR campaigns in the past, it was very much with a focus on creating great content or just uh, target this great story that's very seasonal right now, something that's really up in the air right now. It could be something like uh, the 10 best travel apps for your phone. There was something that I sent out to some major tech magazines and stuff a couple of years ago around the summer where most people will go and need some good travel apps on their phone. And I had some pretty good uh, results with that, but I had to write this really, really great article. And for everyone that came back to me, I had to also write a specific article to them. So it took a lot of time and it gave me a handful of really strong links. And I think that's the way to go if you want to do this. So I think it's really hard to scale because I mean, how do you teach somebody to write really awesome content and reach out to media outlets and so on? But that's the way I would do it if for some reason I wanted to get into something that was very competitive. But I don't do that. I go for the underserved topics, as you know. So nothing has really changed in the broader picture here in my camp. I'm just hiring new writers right now. That's also why I've been a little silent on this channel for two, three weeks. And of course, my whole family and myself had COVID and we we're, st we're still traveling on Madeira. So that was a little frustrating, but we're all up and running again. And um, I'm gonna spend some more time finding some good writers down here before we head back to Denmark. So I hope you're all having a good time out there and uh, best of luck with your blogs. See you.